Hey guys, welcome back to the Evan and Caitlin podcast, the podcast where we are asking the questions. Just the questions. The only questions you need asked and answered. Mainly, Caitlin's going to be interviewing me (laughs) because I got to interview you and we ended up taking a a whole podcast episode just on that one really awesome question that I like thought long and hard about. Primo. Primo question. question. (laughs) Very good. Very good. Um, if you missed it, Evan asked me about editing. But before we jump into like the main topic, I just have a mini topic. I don't know where it's going to fit other than this, but this just like blew my mind, guys. Did you know? I'm, I'm guessing not because it's like a secret. And that's the point of me exposing it because it's a secret. <laughs> but did you know that Twitter has a secret, secret back end where you can upload long videos? You can add like call to action links. You can add a title description you can choose the thumbnail you can use twitter like youtube right but they don't tell you that they don't show you that and how you get access to it is you have to sign up for a twitter ads account which sounds kind of scary it's like well i don't want to i don't want to spend money on ads on twitter and and you not only have to sign up for the ads account, you also have to add your credit card. Also scary. And as soon as you've added your credit card to your Twitter ads account, they now allow you to upload longer videos with thumbnails, titles, call to actions. descriptions, call to actions, like fancy things. Yeah. And it like unlocks this like great level of functionality that I feel like most people might want, especially fellow content creators. Most most people will really want all of those features, mm-hmm. but Twitter just makes it really secretive. I just... It's so weird. It's weird. It's like, I don't know what's weirder to me. I, I think uh, actually this, the fact that it's a secret isn't so weird. The fact that you can do it without paying for anything that's the weirder part for me because it seems like something that should be it's just like for for anyone who cares enough to research it google it and try it you can use it but anyone else no 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 (laughs) it's 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 just crazy it's crazy okay i haven't seen any like i mean we follow a bunch of content creators and you know content creators and like businesses and stuff i haven't seen anyone do it no yeah it's crazy Anyways, (laughs) Anyways, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> we get excited about like anything that feels like a social media hack. <laughs> yeah, it was such a hack, and, and I'm doing it on like not all of our Twitter accounts, but oh yeah, did you guys know that we have three Twitter accounts? Evan and Caitlin, Evan Caitlin Game, Evan Caitlin Podcast. I'm not sure what the podcast one is. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> it might be like Evan Caitlin Pod. I don't know. <laughs> You're so limited on your character. Oh, yeah. Um, anyways, <laughs> moving on to the main topic. Caitlin has some scintillating. Scintillating is that a word? Scintillating? Wait. Oh, wait. I, sorry. We interrupt this regularly scheduled program. Google Scintillating word. means sparkling or shining brightly. Okay. <laughs> Brilliant or excitingly clever or skillful. I've got some scintillating questions for you. Are you prepared? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so last time you asked me about one of my main responsibilities, one of the things that takes up most of my time for the work that we do, and that was editing. So I wanted to ask you about the stuff that you do. And so I thought a interesting place would s- to start would be, what's one of the most difficult tasks that you do that I might underestimate or not see the full picture of? Or maybe like that the audience doesn't fully understand. Difficult or time consuming? Because be I think those are kind of two different things. I think that... The most difficult thing both of us do that not much of the audience sees is like, what video are we doing? (laughs) (laughs) It's like, that's the most difficult and most important thing that we do. And we do put a lot of time and thought and energy into that. Um, But I think that's something that both of us know. So so you, you specifically asked something that you may not know. And that kind of reminds me, I'm not sure if this is my final answer. So, so give me a little bit of time to like process. It can be a stream of consciousness as all of our podcasts usually are. But um, we were going for a walk the other day and we were talking about our content in general and what was fun and what was a little bit more difficult. And one thing that you kind of pointed out is that gaming is just the most pure fun thing. Like, cause like with everything else, there's a lot of work involved. There's like metadata, thumbnails. It's like, we just finalize. Surprise, have to be pressure on something working or not. 
and with with the gaming channel so much of that pressure is relieved one because like we've tried to set it up in that way and not take it too seriously because our main channel carries a lot of the weight but also you know we just choose a game and then we play that game and and that's a pretty good topic but i think that one thing that i, I we discussed and we noticed is that for the gaming channel i take on all of that responsibility and i think that you are really enjoying i both of us really enjoy the gaming channel but caitlin was like man there's like no pressure at all with gaming everything is really chill and like really really laid back but at the same time it's like i was you know reaching out and hiring new editors and training them up and writing procedures and reviewing like you know their their rough edits and like insulating Caitlin from a lot of like the behind the scenes stuff, That's true. uploading all the uncuts, uploading all of the, the, the main things, doing all the metadata, doing the playlist, doing the descriptions, posting it on all the places. And I think that like I, since Caitlin has a huge chunk of extra work that I don't have, which is editing, which is really amazing. I mean, we talked about it all of last podcast, but that's a lot of work. So I try to take on as much of the gaming as I could. So that could be like one of the big things I contribute. And uh, I think it's interesting because it did allow you to just enjoy yeah. the gaming even, even more. Yeah. Which is interesting. But also it's like, I, I love like some of the prep work I do for gaming. Like all like, you know, set up the, the, the backgrounds before we stream. I'll pick out like, you know, sound effects and i'll think of a clever intro to do or like something to start the the stream off with energy so that people watching the uncut will have a fun experience right off the bat so it's like i get a lot of enjoyment out of that in the same way that we get enjoyment out of our main channel videos it's like we like being creative we like going that extra mile and i i enjoy carrying that over to the gaming channel but i do think that I carry a lot more of the pressure for the gaming channel. Like choosing the right game is like actually a big stress for me. <laughs> Not a big stress, but it's like, will this game be good? Will it lead to good highlights? Will it be good for the stream? Like, and sometimes I'll, it's not a, a difficult job, but I'll try a few different games out um, and see if they might be good for the stream. Um, and, and like, I put that pressure on myself. Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> Sorry, that was a lot. I think <laughs> I didn't mean to like unload that much. I'm like, um, man, I need to pick up more responsibility. No, no, no. This is but like this is what I I love. I mean, I love that I can take that on, that I have that place in our business. And I take pride in that and that it's doing well and everything. Just like you like editing, you like the creative fulfillment it gives you mm -hmm. and you would have a hard time giving it up, not only because it's like giving up control, but also because you like being responsible for that. I, I like identify as that. Yeah. No. And, I, and I kind of identify as like one part of this, like one role that I have in our team is like the gaming channel lead in a way, you yeah, know? Yeah, that's true. And like it, the gaming channel wouldn't exist with either of us, just like the main channel wouldn't exist with either of us. Either Both of us are... 100% necessary for the channel, but like you do so much more for the main channel in the editing. And even though I do more like stuff behind the scenes, like with the CAD or 3D models or whatever else, I mean, I think that in terms of the differential, you carry a lot more of the load for the main channel um, with, with the edit. I think one interesting thing, and this is just kind of a reflection of how we work but i tend to work better when i can like really get in the zone on something and mm -hmm. i have a really hard time task switching um, i have a hard time not task switching. yeah you have a hard time not task switching so like interestingly um we've kind of fallen into some of those roles so like the gaming stuff that's a lot of like very individual tasks little a lot things, of like yeah. small things to shuffle that add up to something that's a really big responsibility. Um, and I guess you could kind of say the same thing about like the editing and upload and metadata type stuff. But um, it's more of a focused state that you need to get into for editing because 
I've done a little bit of editing and I think that you've talked about it too, but I, it does seem like you kind of need to get into the flow of things. Mm -hmm. You need to know what was before, what's after. You need to know the whole like... It's hard to edit just half an hour at a time. Yeah. Like to really make progress editing, you usually yeah. need to sit down for hours Yeah. to really but move. I think another thing that, um, you know, some of our recent projects, it may, this may not have been um, as big of a, well, actually, yeah, in some of the recent projects, it, it has been a big deal. But um, you're very responsible for, like, the structural integrity of things <laughs> yeah. of what we do. Yeah, it's like, how thick does it need to be? Does it need to be supported in certain ways? What type of joinery do we choose for this project? So, like, yeah, I, and I think that we've talked about this before some, but, like, when we're filming, I'm always thinking about, like, will the end product be good in terms of the physical thing that we're making? And the bigger concern for you is, like, will the video that we have filmed be good? Did we get that transition? Did we say the right things to move past this area? And I'm like, okay, what do we do next? Do we need to do glue? Like, will, like, finishing this glue up today like advance our schedule by a whole day or it does not matter because we're going to have to do this tomorrow and mm -hmm. the logistics of things. <clears throat> but I feel like that's kind of even. Like, I feel like, like in we've a way <clears throat> become a lot more even on it. Cause if you look at yeah. the beginning, like I remember I used to like, I, I'd be wanting to um, capture something for a video and you wanted to get something done. <laughs> and so you'd start doing it and I'd be like, no, 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 I have to film that. Stop. You know, like, wait, wait for me. And that doesn't really happen that often. You know, sometimes it yeah. happens kind of like jokingly, but <laughs> we always have like two cameras running. So it's always yeah. captured on the other camera. Well, I, I think that's just from the understanding of each other. But I guess like what I was saying is like during the planning, both of us take kind of even responsibility. We each mm -hmm. like bounce ideas off of each other. We're both like in charge of that. During the filming process, you are handling like making sure we get all the edit done or everything we need for the edit. And I am handling like, the logistics of the project. So even though we're doing different things and the same thing, both of us are have like kind of equal weight of responsibility. Mm -hmm. But then once the project is done, <clears throat> you have the edit and I have other things. And sometimes like, well, you know, we've talked about it before. Sometimes like we'll film a few scenes, Caitlin will go edit and then I'll sand or paint or finish or what have you. So yeah, I think, true. I think we are really even. And I think that we do, both keep an eye out for each other where like if I see you are overwhelmed I'll take on more and if you see that I'm overwhelmed you'll take on more so mm -hmm. well and I think likewise I think like because we've been doing this for a while now I think like like whether it's conscious or subconscious you kind of keep track of like you're you're more conscious of the filming and the video now and I think that it's just like built in with practice and I think like maybe I'm more than I used to be more conscious. Oh, of definitely. Like the build or what the right next step should be. I think so. And stuff like that. Yeah. And, and we look out for each other too. It's like, we don't just like hoist all of the responsibility for our part off to the other person. Both of us are conscious of each other's main focus also. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we have both gotten better at it, about that through practice, exposure, repetition and all of that. I think so. Yeah, but I think like the biggest unseen thing, and it's not like something we didn't fully know, and we, we we kind of did talk about it on that walk recently, but I think that was like the biggest recent unknown thing that I was taking on that you maybe weren't yeah. as aware of. Yeah, well, and way. it came up because like I was feeling stressed about main channel stuff, and I was like, man, if fully it was as easy as the gaming channel. Well, I, I think, I think the, the thing that w you were specifically wondering about, and this is kind of tangenting into another topic, you're like, dang, like with the gaming being so good, what what is it about the gaming that's so good that like, like we might be missing on the main channel, and how do we mix, pull some of that goodness from the gaming over to the main channel because we're like the, the the gaming is all good and then like i kind of had to step in like like i think that's because you are protected some from the work yeah that goes on behind the scenes and we both we both enjoy everything that we do but as you guys know we are optimizers we like optimizing everything to, to, to as much of a degree as we can so we're we're never like just okay with status quo we're always looking for how we can improve 
our content, our efficiency, our enjoyment out of life and everything. So we always do appreciate where we're at, but we all are, we are also always trying to improve. I will say I rely on you pretty heavily for the, for like improving us in a technical standpoint, like Mm. gear wise and stuff like that. Um, it's a lot of research. It's confusing. It's a lot of research. It's, it's a lot of games. If you like, think about like <laughs> filming, camera, well, cameras and filming, that's the same thing. Like like cameras, audio, all of the streaming stuff. It's it's a lot. And, I, and I, it's, it's I, not, I would probably have a much simpler setup if it was just me. And I'm not saying like that I would prefer a simpler setup. I prefer what we have now. Yeah. But that's a lot of your knowledge coming in to make that happen. I think the crazy thing that, that, got to me during all of my research and this isn't something that we've really talked about too much but like i did so much research about what camera to use right now that i'm pointing at for those who are watching on youtube (laughs) like what camera to use for this what camera to use in the garage all of this stuff and what's crazy to me is it's not just like simple specs you know it's not like you can just like go for the highest megapixel go for the fastest whatever whatever you know there's like so much that's subjective about quality instead of just like straight up numbers. Like I did some tests. Like one thing that like was actually really good and this isn't like a plug for any store in general, but like we did go to a physical location Mm -hmm. that had a whole bunch of cameras and we actually brought an SD card into the store and we stuck it into all of the cameras and then we stated what camera it was, what settings we had uh, on what lens was in there and we tested it in the store and then we brought it the memory card home and it blew our minds because there were really expensive cameras that had the highest megapixels the highest everything i mean uh, like i don't want to throw any brands under the bus but it, it was like a big name brand and it had all of the highest specs and we looked at it and we're like this doesn't look that good yeah. <laughs> it's like something about it was just off for our aesthetics and what we were wanting and stuff. And it just didn't look like the highest quality. And sometimes it's kind of hard to tell in, unless you do do a test like that where you're filming the same person in the same location and you can compare them. It's kind of hard to tell on that tiny screen when you're not looking at it right next to anything else. Yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm glad I was able to help there too. Even though like, <laughs> I think that there is a lot of guilt on my part when I buy something and then later on I upgrade it or I buy something and it's bad and it just sits there staring at me making me feel guilty all the time <laughs> i'm thinking of a few things in particular and i don't i, I think you are too and we don't need to go into yeah. it <laughs> but i think Bye. that i think that it is like to a certain degree the cost of doing business like start figuring out what is worth it to pay the extra for and what isn't worth it to pay the extra for and and all of that that's true related to that i do feel like you're often the like agent of change <laughs> yes. <laughs> again I, I mean i'm thinking you know i thought of it because of things like gear and our setup and optimizing but i feel like you also tend to push us and all all, all in good ways but like <clears throat> push us when it comes to sponsors or events or you know a lot of these things you know when we were doing them for the first time sometimes i'll just like accept something and say like hey caitlin we're doing it not really it's not that extreme but like (laughs) i have just like gotten us into things or like like i think the the biggest time i've just like gotten us into things is like in person i'll just like be very positive about something or like get us into like a commitment or whatever (laughs) just based on like my like intuition and just seizing on opportunities. And Caitlin's like, wait, what? What? <laughs> <You> what? <laughs> we're doing what? Yeah, we're speaking where? Where? <laughs> no, but I think, it, I think it's good. I think it's good. It like helps get me out of my box. Or when um, I think that another time that, that I just like threw us into something is when we did our vlogging. <clears throat> I'm like, hey, Caitlin, let's vlog. Here's a camera. Vlog. <laughs> <laughs> And then we like filmed and edited it and I'm like, we should post it. Let's post it. We're posting it. <laughs> and Caitlin's like, eh, I don't know about this. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and like looking back on it, were they the best? No. Did we do it on the right channel? I'm not sure. Did we do it the best way? I'm not sure. But like it pushed us and it evolved us in very important ways. And I'm so glad we did it. Mm-hmm. Even though we may not have done it the right way or what have you or optimized or what have you. But yeah. um. Because it was good practice and it helped us 
get to the style of filming we are at now. Yeah. And I think that, that, um, I think that part of what's going on behind the scenes is Caitlin likes to be sure about choices. She wants to, you know, make the right informed decision with all of the information and like, she doesn't want to pull the trigger until it's all known. Yeah. But the problem with YouTube is none of it is known. <laughs> and even if it's known for one channel, that doesn't mean that it holds true for another channel, which basically means that for us to figure out our own channel, we need to do like live experimentation yes. on our channel via the audience, you guys. And we use your <laughs> Like you, views and your views and your shares and your comments and all of that as input data into this experiment that we're running <laughs> live as we film, edit, and everything. And I think that's one one advantage of having a YouTube channel because we film, we edit, we upload, we get real time feedback, we we adjust, we change, we can tweak. And it's not like we're filming for a year and then releasing a year's worth of content. It's like yeah. live back and forth using live data i don't know yeah um so another question that i have what was the original question the original question <laughs> God, is, how uh, far did we get derailed no, that's fine. the original question was like what's one of the most difficult tasks you do that i might or the audience might underestimate yeah um are there any seemingly boring or not fun tasks that you secretly like Yes and no. I think the the main thing that I might secretly like is time things that give me time to listen to podcasts or audiobooks when I have a really good audiobook. This is dependent <laughs> on having something good. So it, it depends on if I have something good. Um something that I secretly like. Yeah, I mean like when 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 I yeah, I think that's that's the only ex thing i can think of right now because so what kind of things i mean i think i know but just so you have an answer like mainly it's like um painting finishing um sanding uh doing repeated cuts on wood anything that's like a very easy repetitive like task that isn't too physically intensive and draining but also allows me to listen to an audiobook yeah so things that like don't require the like uh, words part of my words brain. Words part of your brain. Yeah, so it's like not emails, not <laughs> anything like that, but like something that's chill where I can just listen to an audiobook. I think that's that's one thing I do get enjoyment out of. That makes sense. It's like like we mentioned before cuz a lot of times like I'll use that time to edit a lot of those kind of like longer term but just kind of you get in the zone and you do the thing tasks fall on you sometimes i'll i'll join in or i'll do it instead um and i do understand because it is a nice break like when i was graphic designing i used to have a lot more chances to just like listen to stuff because i yeah. didn't use the words part of my brain but with like editing or emails or yeah with like, a lot of what you do you don't have extra Word parts of brain. <laughs> yeah, I don't have extra words are hard. Don't have extra word parts of brain. Um, so I get that. Yeah. Interesting. This is a side note. I've heard of people who like listen to podcasts while they edit, and I'm like, what? How? Well, no, I, I could see that if you if there are no words in your edit. If there are no words, or like if you're just editing to music. Like maybe you could listen to a podcast also, and if all you're doing is timing the edit to music, maybe it seems hard. Or I don't know. I can see like a few specific types of editing that that might work for, but not definitely not ours, because ours is now like 100% words 100% of the time. Yeah, words all the time. <laughs> words all the time, unless it's a montage, which is only like one scene out of the whole 23 minute episode, which is basically a TV show length. <laughs> it is strange that our videos have gotten so long. Yeah. yeah. And it's something that we didn't consciously do. Mm -mm. That's just like what our video length turns out to be for reason. <laughs> for reason. Just that one. Reason. Just that one reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. If you could go back and 
Actually, let me let me go to another question. All right. This this might be kind of repetitive, so if it is, we can go to the next. But what's the biggest pressure that you put on yourself, work wise? The boy. biggest pressure I put on myself that that like gets to me. I'm gonna add that because like there's yeah. a lot of pressures we put on us, but I feel like we can handle. <clears throat> I think the biggest pressure I put on myself has always kind of been trying to ensure that we are going to be happy long term with our life, with our choices, with like kind of like all of the decisions that we've made, like kind of just like, are we putting ourselves down a path that will like be bad or like... Like long, long, long term, like big picture stuff. Are we gonna burn out? Are we gonna be like are we gonna have all of our financials in place for the long run? What if um this dries up or that dries up or we need to switch or what have you? You know, it's like those are the biggest long term pressures that I put on myself. And those are the pressures that I've always kind of put on myself, whether when it was just me or me and you. Mm -hmm. I mean like when, when I was at my past job, that was a pressure that really, really got to me because I liked engineering to a certain degree. But the specific job I was doing, I wasn't fully crazy about it. I don't know if I was getting into the wrong field. Like, did I love this field? No. <laughs> Are there other fields I might like more? Maybe. How do I transition? I don't know. <laughs> so it's like, those are the pressures I've put on myself. Kind of not all my life is, is, is an exaggeration, but I, I did think early on, I think just because of the things we talked about in my family, my, my relatives and stuff talked about work a lot. So I've thought about work since I was a teenager. I mean, honestly, like early teens, I had always thought about work and how to prepare myself for work, what field I was going to go into and everything. I did know engineering for the longest time. And I did like want to like, it's so crazy. I've talked about this before, but I do want to do like making. I want to like make stuff. I want to invent stuff. I want to have a big workshop full of stuff. That's why I became an engineer. I want to be able to do all the things at any time. <clears throat> That's like my dream. But I, I did think, how do I turn that into a job? And engineering seemed like th by far the best choice to me back then. But yeah, I always have put pressure on myself because what you do as a job is such a big proportion of your life. Such a, like, mm -hmm. it's the biggest percentage of your life, more than anything in your life, is what you do for your, your work. Yeah, especially even if, if you're thinking like quite literally the hours you spend mm -hmm. working versus yeah. not working. Yeah, that, that's why like, you know, like it's like mathematically work, <laughs> work sleep, other things. <laughs> sleep probably wins because you sleep your whole life. Oh, yeah, that's true. And you only work for 40. I guess I was thinking yeah. the amount of hours we work now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah. No, so so work, work and sleep maybe might be tied. Who knows? <laughs> but then like work and sleep are the number one and two things you do. And then there's like family, personal hobbies, yeah, everything like that. That kind of like follows after in a way. So, so yeah, I have always put that pressure on myself because, like we have said, we like to future proof. We like to make sure we're on the right path. And the sooner you're on the right path, the 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 more secure you can be on that path. The more time you can spend on that right path. It's like you want to make that decision as early as you can and you know i know that we have been in very lucky places to be able to shift our life and focus our life in the ways that we have um but but yeah that that has been a pressure and one thing that i have thought of before in the past is like feeling like opening yourself up to every possibility is good because you, you really do broaden your horizons about what you think you might be capable of. But also opening yourself up to like every possibility, every job, every career, that just like adds so much like stress and pressure because it's like almost like a, an infinite, I don't know, it's it's like too much. Mm -hmm. There's there's studies done, you know, I, I like half of the studies that I know are quoted because of like Ted 
Radio Hour or Hidden Brain. So Very it's one podcast. of those two. It's it's uh, Hidden Brain or TED Radio Hour. It's in one of those <laughs> podcasts. But they did a study on choices. And I think uh, I'm mixing like two podcasts in my brain. One about choices and one about Trader Joe's. <laughs> 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 and w- one was just about choices in general. And one was about Trader Joe's and how Trader Joe's reduced the number of choices to increase happiness. Um so those are two different, totally different things. But like, if you go to the supermarket wanting to get jam, if there are too many, you're unhappy. If there's too few, you're unhappy. If there's like, if you go and there's two choices of jam, you're like, no, what's up with this? This sucks. I want more than two choices. <clears throat> if you go and there's 100 choices, that's bad. Too many jams. <laughs> too many jams. 100 is obviously too many, but like <clears throat> maybe 15. 15 might be the ideal number. What the number is depends on what it, what you're choosing, yeah. you know, and how much research you need to do. Like, what's the difference between this jam and this jam and this jam and this jam and this jam? And this jam and the, what, what the jam? <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, I think that if someone approached you and said, you need to choose between these three types of engineering jobs, choose, and you just chose, and like that was the only option to you, you might be potentially more happy than if, someone came to you and said, you can choose any of these 5,000 jobs. Choose. Yeah. By the way, you should do it really quick because the number of years you work at your first job kind of dictates the rest of your life. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And make this choice without any real world experience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, it is hard to talk to, like, I think that... There's another TED Radio Hour about how we stink at predicting how happy we are going to be with life choices. Like the human brain can process and predict some things. Like if you are designing ice cream flavors, you can understand how like mint chocolate chip might be a good flavor or maybe like a uh, like strawberry and you know other fruit flavor. Who knows? Like <laughs> strawberry and vanilla, tasty. You can like if even if you've never had strawberry vanilla ice cream, you can picture that and say, "Hmm, that could be good if they keep the the flavor balance is right and stuff." But, but if, what about strawberry ketchup? Strawberry ketchup, you know, that's not going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, that's not tasty. That's not. It's like you can process those things, but like if someone approaches you and says, "Hey, do you want to work at this company or this company or this company or this job, this job, this job?" It's like there's too many variables. There's too much. There's it's like the human brain just isn't the best at predicting that. And like they've, the studies have said that like the best way to predict if you're going to be happy or not is to find someone that's similar to you in it. That, that's already in that similar situation that you're thinking about doing and ask them, but it's not like you can go and ask every single different type of engineer what their experiences are and make sure that their life profile matches with yours yeah. and then end up in a job that has similar coworkers to them. Cause coworkers are such a big part of it. Yeah. Oh, sorry, that's a big. I think I'm getting worked up about these because we're talking <laughs> about sorry. things that like I do get worked up about oh. and that have stressed me in the past. I um, have kind of a follow up. Yeah. So, okay, back. <laughs> <laughs> this is an enjoyable conversation okay, for me okay, to have. Okay, I do, okay. I do like this. I'm like, putting you through misery. No, no, it's like <laughs> these are just things that I'm very passionate about that I've thought a lot about, and I have things to say, and so. I, I, I just like find myself on my soapbox preaching but i'm just not sure if it makes sense <laughs> so it, it makes sense to me but i don't know i think it makes sense i do have a follow-up that's related mm-hmm. so um so a lot of the stress about future happiness and future trajectory um a lot of that was felt back when you were working like either about to go into working a traditional job or at a traditional job and that that's kind of like a typical path you like get a job working for a company and you do the things and it's pretty known it's relatively known like you can look at other coworkers that have been there longer there's usually a chain of command that you can work your way up there's predictable things like health care and <laughs> retirement plans yeah um but there's much less control in what you do like you can't just go to your boss and be like um 
I'm going to start doing this now. <laughs> cool. Um, whereas what we're doing now. But you can go to your boss and say, I'm sick. I should take a day off. Yeah. Can my co- other coworkers cover for me for a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. But that's a, yeah, that's a different yeah. topic. Now we're in a job where we have a lot more control, even though we do like make commitments and stuff um, that we feel like we need to stick to. We're the ones that made those commitments, but we can all of a sudden say like, let's play video games for work. Let's make that a yes. thing that we do. <laughs> Um, so we have a lot more control and flexibility, but there is not really a known proven path like YouTube slash content creation as a career is very new. There's not like a set path. Everybody goes down. There's not like a a common progression. So is it more pressure now because of the lack of foreseeable path? Or the blurriness of the foreseeable path or the, you know, however you want to picture it. Or is there less pressure because we have more control over the path that we take? Definitely less. And I've been thinking about why that is. And I'm talking slowly because I still (laughs) am. (laughs) And I'm buying myself time. But I think... I think that one of the reasons why there is so much pressure, so much time pressure about choosing the right path is because at other, like when when you're in the traditional job market, you are working at the pleasure of like your, your, your company, your bosses, like the, like the industry, if it's up or down, like whatever, like they, like you can be fired at any time and there's no reason why someone needs to hire you so it's not like you can just like switch at any time to any job and in any position get hired get be qualified and have security there at any time you can be fired and at any time you might want to move jobs but you can't mm-hmm. because you're not qualified for that new job and in order to get hired you need experience but in order to get experience you need to get hired So I think that the biggest pressure, like the biggest thing that caused me pressure and unease about the job before was the, the fact that I felt I was getting locked in. Like I felt like doors were closing, opportunities were closing. I felt like I was getting boxed in and the longer you spend at that job, the more boxed in you got. And I think to some people, you might like find the job that you love and you go there and you love it and everything is good. But I, I wasn't, I, I, I wasn't particularly hundred percent feeling good about like my career in some ways, not that I thought it was bad and not that I didn't enjoy the work that I did and the people that I spent time with, but like, you know, I was thinking about like 40 years or however long I might work am I going to be happy for 40 years? And I think the answer I was coming up with was no. But I think that the biggest change about this is that no one can tell us no. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, we're like, we're going to start gaming now. And it's not like anyone has can tell us no, because we're just going to do it. You know, we, no one can fire us because we employ us. You know, it's like, no one can tell us that a mood ring toilet seat's a bad idea. Yeah, it's like if we make decisions that are bad or if we mess up or whatever, it's like we're not going to fire us. I don't know. And, and at the same time, might fire us. you know, we do trust each other and each other's visions and goals. And like, you know, you've discussed, you've brought up some interest in some other types of videos that we might try in the future. And I think let's do them. I'm not sure when we're going to film them and what, what channel we're going to put them on. Are we going to start a f- sixth channel? <laughs> I don't know. Are they going to go on Evan and Caitlin too? I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. No one can say no though. It's just, it's yeah. just us and we choose what we want to do and <clears throat> no one can fire us. <laughs> and I think that that that's the biggest thing. Like if for some reason I wanted to get into more new product development, well, I could do that and I could document that journey on Evan and Caitlin or 
start a new channel and I can use the platform that we built up to do that. It's like the place that we, we like the, the biggest worry that I had was future flexibility and future proofing our career choices. And I feel like what we've stumbled into is ultimate flexibility, mm -hmm. ultimate reinventability, ultimate power over our own destiny. And I feel like that's one of the biggest things that I appreciate with this as opposed to a traditional job. I mean, there's a lot. It's a good job. It was a good job. I'm wearing pajamas down here. I'm Me wearing comfy too. pants. <laughs> <laughs> or am I not wearing any pants? What? Crazy fuck ass. Could I'm, be I'm, doing... wearing, I'm wearing pajamas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we're, fuzzy socks. We're both wearing PJs <laughs> and fuzzy socks. Because fuzzy socks are the best. Yeah. It's um, <laughs> 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 a good job. It's a good job. But, yeah. I, what was the question? My, my yeah, question. yeah. So the question is like, is Which was like, more pressure. Like, like, like yeah. since I've been feeling this pressure my entire life, is the switch to what we've chosen an improvement for that pressure or a worsening because of the unknowns? And I feel like in a way, it's almost more known, even though there's so many unknowns. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense in my head. Well, there's more. Well, I was going to say there's more control. There is like. So how about this? A lack of control. In I truly believe 100% that we are going to be working for Evan and Caitlin for the rest of our lives. And that's a really good thing. What are we going to be doing? I don't know. Could evolve. Let's say that like VR explodes. There's like an improvement in nanotechnology and VR is crazy and everyone loves VR. And like, we you know, we record all of our projects on a VR camera so people yeah. can watch us doing and, and projects people, people, And we make VR tube videos where we make vr diy and we play vr games i don't know it's like yeah <laughs> like i don't know what the future is gonna be because no one does except for tube she goes there she does through the cat portals yeah so we're still trying to work on her to get that information She's there now i've seen her all day <laughs> we'll have to have her on as the next q a guest it'll be a very <laughs> She'll, she'll speak to everyone short. with her mind oh uh, yeah 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 and so it'll, it'll be like an hour-long video of the supervisor <laughs> staring at you and if you are, have a high enough iq yep it's gonna be a good podcast <laughs> podcast <laughs> the podcast it'll, it'll be a good podcast <laughs> um yeah but i think that the the biggest stress has been the unknown of what career am i locking myself in and all of that and the biggest change in that regards is I, I do really feel like we're going to be working at Evan and Caitlin forever. What, it, what it's going to be, I don't know, but I do feel confident that we can evolve, change, and grow along with whatever is happening because no matter what, life gets kind of boring and people need entertainment and we are making pretty good entertainment based on the data that our audience is providing us and I feel, I feel good about that. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. That's yeah. a good way to look at it. Yeah. Good okay. questions. Thank you. Deep. Sh shall we? Uh, questions. With Evan and Kayla. <laughs> shall we move on to our thing of the week? Yeah, let's move on to our thing of the week. Wow. I like Q&A episodes. Me too. I feel like they, they're they just like us having fun conversations, talking about things that we were curious about to chat with each other. Yeah. It's like a nice excuse to like ask questions that I'm curious about. One thing that I am passionate about and still curious to explore are five millimeter camera lighting audio rod accessories. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 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 so for those, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, um, I like aluminum extrusions. Yeah. I like modular everything yes. and, and one reason why i really like modular extrusions like for desks and builds is it's really easy to build something impressive rigid strong modifiable there's all sorts of attachments and basically 15 millimeter rods are that for camera lighting audio video etc 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 and uh they're, they're just they're just really good and high quality. I mean, my gosh, like, I feel like we could build. No, they're kind of expensive for like just DIY stuff, but. <clears throat> or maybe we just do a project where we build a whole something with 15 millimeter aluminum rods. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they're just, they're really cool. 
So they're um, kind of like standard, a, a standard. They're thing? a standard within the photo, video, audio industry, and uh, a lot of people who build like shoulder rigs with them, filming rigs with them, like all sorts of photography construction is made using these things because you can like slide anything onto it and there's all sorts of adapters and there's just like on on all of these websites that sell camera gear there's all sorts of accessories and it's it's really really neat um in particular the the reason why we needed them is we posted some images on patreon maybe we'll have to share this on our our main social media now that it's built you'll be able to see it in um the video that we put out right before this. Yes. Comes when out. I when I zoom in the bent resin lamps. on yeah, when I zoom in on the uh, the the tripod with the camera, you'll see it for a moment there. But maybe we'll post a photo along with it because I think it's interesting. Um, but we needed to build a really secure platform that could hold our camera and our whole audio recording jig that we could take off and add on and move we around, have level like it. A two-headed tripod. Now, thanks to thanks to these things, so our tripod, if you picture it, instead of just at the top of the tripod, there's a camera. At the top, there's a horizontal beam, essentially, with the camera being one head and the audio bundle being yeah. the other head. But it's like 14 inches wide yeah. on top of a tripod, yeah. and the whole thing is rigidly locked on there. Like when we, when we take the SD card in and out, the whole thing doesn't go wah, 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 wah. It's like... It's very rigid. Very rigid, which is... Which is good because it's a lot, <laughs> it's a lot of money. It's a lot of investment. A lot of equipment. Yeah. So I think that's my thing of the week because it's my new modular building material obsession. Yes. It's yes. the new aluminum extrusion. <laughs> yes. They're also aluminum extrusions, but <laughs> they're aluminum extrusions in a different form. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my thing of the week... When did this video even come out? We've been... um. It's not. It's not a new video. We found a new content creator, and we've been on a kick just watching. Oh, it is pretty new. Oh, it is. Yeah, that's okay, really cool, new. Cool, cool. Yeah. Okay. So, um, we've been watching a lot of Danny Gonzalez. He's not a new content creator. We just hadn't. You know, you're always like running across channels on YouTube, and you're like, "Wow, this channel has like a few million subs, yeah. and like the content is good." How did I not know about this person until? right now yeah so that happened with danny gonzalez um and he does a lot of funny like commentary type videos on you know like social media type stuff or just um like i don't know he, he's very funny yeah um and there, so, there is some cursing so maybe don't watch with you yeah kids. Don't, don't like watch well, with I, like kids, we, we love his we love his content it's it's very entertaining so <laughs> you know i thought for my thing of the week i would recommend um one of uh, my favorite videos of his that we've watched recently. And it actually is a pretty recent video. Um, the video is I changed my identity on Instagram and got away with it. Kind of. And so, so good. he basically, and I had heard about this guy that he like, I heard it about it on of. like NPR. Or I something heard about like it on, on reply all. The oh, podcast oh, reply, reply all. all. Oh yeah. yeah um, maybe that was it. <laughs> so there's one of our podcasts. Yeah. There's, there's this guy called Paul Zimmer who <laughs> I think was it on tiktok or instagram anyways he basically like he had some faux pas kind of went dark on social media and then came back and was like hey this other person by a different name is like the younger hotter version of me you should all go follow him and it was just him it was just him, him. with a different name him with a different name and he was like and he was pretending to be a different person on this other profile so that he could escape no, no, all of the he, controversy but what he said is like since i think this guy is so cool i'm just gonna hand over my instagram and all my social media accounts to him so he like kept his followers so like so danny's video is kind of a, a about what this guy did but he tried doing it himself to see like would this even be possible? Because everyone called out this this dude. Yeah. It was, he didn't try to change anything. So in Danny's video, he tried to actually like really try to use photos of himself and convince his audience that it was a different and he, person. He, and like, the goal was to... Slightly modified. Slightly modified. Yeah. But, but the goal was to like gain this fake person 10,000 subscribers by the end of the experiment. So I won't tell you how it turned out. But it was very interesting to watch. It was. Yeah. So we'll have a link to that and a link to 
I mean, I don't know how you want to link to the f 15 millimeter rods. And I'll just lot, list but. a few different accessories that I liked and you can Google you can, the rest. And you can go down the rabbit hole from there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for joining us in today's podcast. We really appreciate you guys tuning in week after week. And we really appreciate those five star reviews that you've already left. I'm sure. I trust you. You've already left them, right? We appreciate you. And sharing it with your friends and family or people you think might like it. Uh, that's a lot of asks. Okay. We should go now. Bye. Bye. <laughs>